It's Sunday, I'm over here at the shop while all you heathens are probably watching YouTube videos. Uh, I wanna do a little bit of work and also, I just got my Gen 3 VS Wasting wastegate, so let's do an unboxing. Now a Gen 3 wastegate is a piston style wastegate, opposed to being a diaphragm style wastegate. Look at that, nice, nice. Got V-band clamp and our flange for the out. Got two NPT fittings and plugs to plug the, put fittings and plug the holes in this guy. All right. So this is a piston style wastegate. That means that there's a piston in here instead of a diaphragm that's sealing the top port from the bottom port. So with the magic of television, I, I said with the magic of television, I'm not that good of a snapper, so I took one apart off camera before I started this. But this is what a piston wastegate is. You have your top hat that has a bore within it that these two O-rings seal on, and then your springs go on top of your piston here, and the piston's linked to the shaft for the wastegate valve, okay? So it's O-ringed and sealed within this bore, opposed to a diaphragm style wastegate, which, has a top on top of the spring and has a piston attached to the valve. It's hard to see on camera because this is used. There's valve in there. Shaft, it's attached and then there's a diaphragm. Oh, there's a diaphragm that seals the bottom from the top, okay? So O-rings in a bore seal up better than a diaphragm. This will take higher pressure than this. This is arguably more reliable than this. This is kind of the old staple. Uh, this is more, uh, you see a lot of companies coming out with these now. Uh, I want this because I'm gonna do uh, some, some pressure wastegate control, whether it's CO2 or from an air compressor on car or something. I haven't quite figured out which route I wanna go with that yet. Let's move some of this stuff off here. I guess we'll just set, set this stuff right off to the side here. New fancy dancy waste gates. All right. Uh, most people would, end, you know, do a lot more talking about nothing and end the video there, but I'm not really that person, so let's talk about math and physics and formulas because I am that type of person. Let's talk about what your wastegate is actually doing. This wastegate basically becomes an inequality. If the sum of the forces pushing the shaft down is more than the sum of the forces pushing the shaft up, it stays closed. If the sum of the forces pushing it up are more than pushing it down, it opens. What a wastegate does is it lets out exhaust energy. I'm going to say that again for the guys in the back. It is not just airflow. There's, you're spooling up the turbo with energy. Whatever energy comes out of this wastegate bypasses the turbo. It does not drive the turbine, does not make shaft speed, does not make compressor RPM does not make boost. So that's, this wastegate is not controlling boost pressure. This wastegate is controlling how much energy is diverted away from the turbocharger turbine, okay? And again, I say exhaust energy because it is not just airflow, there's also heat of expansion there. So there's pressure coming from more than one factor just like this wastegate is working on more than one force. These are the forces that are acting on the wastegate. 
we have the we'll leave this guy up here so you can see uh visually for the guys that need picture menus at denny's we have spring pressure pushing down on our shaft trying to close it we have the top port pushing down trying to close it we have the bottom port trying to push up trying to open it we have the exhaust energy on the end of the valve here trying to push this open we also have if there's restriction after this wastegate whether it's ported to atmosphere or if you recirculate it and if you have you know short pipe or long pipe or pipe plus muffler there'll be uh, a pressure differential between those and that factors into the equation of what this wastegate is going to do and when it's going to do it without ever putting this wastegate on a car i can tell you what this thing's going to do uh the easiest so there's a couple ways you could check what pressure these springs are as far as force one way i can take this in my valve spring tester put it you know clear stuff over by the arbor press put my valve spring tester in it i can figure out what my installed height is by measuring the the depth here versus where it sits in there find out what my installed height of the spring is and then measure the force uh, that's actually a little bit more complicated than just putting um, pressure to the wastegate here with my handy dandy low resolution pressure regulator hooked to my air compressor so I went and I did that the small spring takes 8 psi on the bottom port to crack this wastegate the big spring takes 8.5 psi to crack this wastegate both springs take 16.5 psi I rounded to the nearest half pound. Uh, the resolution on that gauge is in half pounds. So it's, it's good enough for the girls you guys date. Now, you can also measure the diameter of this piston and you can calculate the area of it. So I can literally figure out what spring pressure in force these are uh, my piston radius is one inch 92 thousandths so the formula for area is pi r squared so we take that and square it times pi and it's rough it's i round it up it's 3.75 square inches my shaft radius which is the radius of this shaft right here is 193 thousandths that gives me an area of 117 thousandths uh square inches and then my valve, to find my valve area, the radius is 980, uh, 908 and a half thousandths. My area is 2.59 square inches. So if I want to figure out my other factors, the area of my valve top here, because the shaft's in the way, so we can't on the bottom where we're able to apply force on this whole valve on the top because there's a shaft in there we are not able to apply force on that on the whole valve we need to subtract the area of that shaft so you take your area of the valve minus the area of the shaft and you come up with uh, 2.473 square inches for this and then the piston bottom is the same way. There's a shaft in the way. So we have the whole surface area of the piston to act on with pressure on the top. On the bottom, we need to deduct the area of the shaft. So if we do our 3.75 minus our 0.117, we get 3.633 square inches of surface area here. With this knowledge of what it takes to crack this valve with the springs, and our areas we can calculate how much spring pressure these are we can calculate if we have uh if we don't register reg, uh reference the top or bottom port to anything we know how much back pressure it would take to open this even we can do the math on all of that right now sitting here in my shop before this ever gets put on a car and that you know there are cars that have whoops that have um that will run a wastegate referencing nothing and then it's just 
spring pressure versus the forced on the exhaust here. And I drew a schematic of, you know, our exhaust energy pushing up, the resistance from the back, whatever back pressure this sees. This could, if it's just vented to atmosphere, it's gonna be close to atmosphere unless you're flowing a lot of energy and then the restriction is gonna go up and be slightly above atmosphere. If you've got it recirculated back and there's a muffler, it's going to be higher than atmospheric. So that plays a bigger role in this equation. But this is why you can't just hop on boosted LSX and somebody can tell you, I put this, I put the little spring in and how much boost is it gonna make? Well, there's a lot of variables here because the spring is easy to figure out. The top port pressure, the bottom port pressure, all that's easier to figure out. The restriction is not so easy to figure out. You'd actually have to measure what that pressure is. If it's recirculated, then you're just gonna use atmospheric pressure for that part of the formula. The exhaust energy is really hard to figure out. You need to measure your back pressure to be able to come up with a number for this. There, there's not really a great way to math it out because this is gonna be a production of thermal expansion and also airflow. So you could do the airflow of an engine at a given RPM based on like VE, boost pressure, RPM, displacement, all of that stuff, but it's hard to factor in the thermal expansion component of it to come up with this number. This is the equation that we're working on. So this equation represents this way, this wastegate. So physically what the wastegate is doing is either opening or closing based on the force that's acting on either side of it. And this is an equation that re represents all those forces. So we have our exhaust energy, pi, the diameter of this valve face, uh, squared plus the bottom port pressure, which is going to act on this valve. So you have to calculate the valve, the, uh, the, the piston bore diameter minus the shaft diameter. That's what that is here. And it's an inequality. So either this side of it, the forces acting to push it open is going to be greater than the forces that push it close, or these forces are going to be less than those forces. On the other side, we have spring pressure. We have top port pressure that's acting on the area of this valve, which is pi piston radius squared plus your restriction here, which is going to be atmospheric pressure or a little bit above, and that's acting on the active surface area of this valve here, which is pi uh, valve top squared minus the pi shaft radius squared. And for the guys with picture menus, what that looks like is the amount of spring pressure or the amount of uh, energy that's pushing up on this valve, which is small, versus the amount of, and the amount of pressure pushing up on this, which is bigger, and we've got a hole like a donut because we got to take out the area of the shaft, versus spring pressure pushing down on the piston and pushing down on the valve, okay? So that's our inequality here visually. And that is how your wastegate works. It's all pressure differentials versus the mechanical, you know, pressures versus surface areas and spring pressure. Those are all the factors that your wastegate acts under. So, if we take these numbers and we take our area, eight PSI, and it's acting on 3.75 square inches. Well, we did, we did bottom port, okay? We did bottom port to compress, to open up the valve. So it took eight PSI on our area of bottom port times three point 633 equals, so that's roughly a 29 pound spring. Where's my marker? So small spring roughly has 29 pounds of seat pressure. 
okay? Eight and a half PSI times the area of the bottom port to, to crack that spring, 3.633. And this spring is roughly 30.9 pounds seat pressure. Okay, so bolt springs should be about just shy of 60, 59.8988 pounds, all right? So now we know what the, what the spring force is on this. So if we do not hook up this wastegate to anything, we just let it be spring pores first back pressure. You take the, let's say we have one spring. We just put in our 29 pound seat pressure spring. So 29, and we know the area of our valve face here. The area of our valve is 2.59 square inches. So we do 29 divided by 2.59 it would take 11.119. So if we don't hook this to anything, 11.19 pounds of back pressure to open up this valve. So if we're one to one, 11 point, if we, if this turbocharge, if whatever turbocharger we're running on whatever engine that we're running, with this wastegate controlling the exhaust energy that hits that turbo, if we're one to one, this small spring is gonna make about 11 pounds. If we're two to one, this small spring is gonna make five point something pounds, hooked to nothing. You could do the same math for this big spring, hook it to nothing and that's what it's gonna make. So that's the way you could math out anything. Now, if you hook to top port or if you hook to bottom port, you can figure out just using the area of these different elements where we put our pressure, we can figure out how putting pressure on this affects what pressure it takes to open this. And you can do a little bit of guesstimation because you're going to be somewhere from one to one to a maximum of about two to one back pressure to boost ratio, or you could say one to two, whichever way. So we're either going to be one to one or two to one back pressure to boost pressure. We can see what we're going to do. And then, you know, if you have three port, four port back valve, this just becomes a orifice to let pressure in here, you have an idea already of where you need to be. And you can literally math and science out almost racing, making power with an engine, anything. It It's all physics and all of physics can be represented with an equation if you figure out the factors. And if you, you know, you do all your measurements, you can literally math this out and see what this all is gonna do. Now. I'm going to have two of them, so you just multiply all of this by two. So that's a Gen 3 wastegate unboxing. These things are pretty slick. I'm excited to get them on the car. I'm doing some other stuff with the car. So it'll be a whole new combination. It might take me a little bit of time to get done because I have a lot of customer work that I have to do as well. But that's it. These things are pretty slick. This is all the factors that affect your wastegate. So it's a lot more complex than most people think that it is.